Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another live edition of Coffee Break. So since this is a live session, I'm hoping that we will be able to have the opportunity to, uh, um, to answer some question and answer period over, the, um, uh, over on Facebook Live. So if you have any questions, what I'll do is that during the show I will pull up um, the, the connection and see if there are any questions. So um, today's the feast of uh, Saint Scholastica and we are also continuing on our um, celebration in honor of the year of Saint Joseph. And so, um, so today um, for our opening prayer, we're going to pray the, off the prayer to Saint Joseph, which by the way, we started praying at all of our masses this past weekend. <clears throat> so let us pray. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Saint Joseph, foster father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and most holy spouse of our Blessed Mother, we come before you to present our petitions and to invoke your intercession. Through the love which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and through the fatherly love you gave to the child Jesus, we humbly beg you, through your intercession, power and strength, to assist us in our needs. O Guardian of the Holy Family and Patron of the Universal Church, defend us and all of the children of God from every contagion of error and corrupting influence of the enemy. O Most Mighty Protector, be kind to us, and from heaven assist us in our struggles from the power of darkness. As once you protected the child Jesus and our Blessed Lady from deadly peril, so now protect God's Holy Church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield us by your constant protection, <clears throat> so that, supported by your prayers and example, we may be able to live devoutly in this life and enter eternal life in holiness. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, uh, so we have uh, another live edition of our coffee break, and um, we are uh, today, uh, what I'd like to do is just to spend some time giving you some updates, uh, especially with Lent coming up next week. Can't you believe it? Lent is already coming up next week. Uh, it, it, it seems like it was just Christmas, uh, just, you know, yesterday, and now we are coming up for Lent. Um, and uh, we have a lot of things going on during Lent here in our parish of Mary Mother of Mercy that I'd like to, uh, to share with you. You might have gotten bits and pieces of it at Mass or maybe talking to your friends and neighbors, but uh, I just want to be, I just want to take the time uh, this afternoon to, to share with you some of the things that's happening. So first of all, first of all, with Ash Wednesday uh, next week, uh, we do have a number of uh, masses and prayer services. So we have uh, we will have a 9 a.m. mass uh, with the distribution of ashes uh, at Our Lady of Lords and 12 p.m. mass at Our Lady of Lords. And then that afternoon we have a 3 uh, 30 at um, at our at Our Lady Queen of Peace. And then uh, 4.45 at Our Lady of Lords, they are prayer services that we will be conducting. And then we have a 7 p.m. Mass at Our Lady Queen of Peace, again with the distribution of ashes. So uh, this year, we're, it's, it's going to be done a little differently. And again, you might have heard me talk about this in, in our previous show. But um, the Holy See, or the Vatican, along with the U.S. Conference of Bishops, have mandated that uh, the distribution of ashes will be conducted with the sprinkling of the ashes over the head. So what will happen is that the priest or the deacon will, will invoke the prayers that, that's normally prayed uh, during Ash Wednesday, during the imposition of ashes, which is either um, repent and believe in the gospel or remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. So the priest or the deacon will say that once over the congregation, uh, and then um, that, that will be after he has blessed the, the ashes. And then you will come up to receive your ashes. But instead of us 
uh, tracing the cross on your on the crown of your head on your forehead it will be sprinkled over your head and um, you know it's it's a practice that 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 you see in Europe and in, in other parts of the world um, and um, it is also uh, a practice that that actually dates all the way back to biblical times so uh, so the imposition of ashes that 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 we are um, that we're going to be uh, going into this particular Ash Wednesday is going to be very similar to what they, they, they do in other countries as well as in biblical times. Now you might ask, well, why this change? Well, the obvious reason is the pandemic. You know, because if we were to impose the ashes in a similar way, um, we would have to touch the person's, each person's head. All right? Uh, which means that, you know, it will, we would certainly have to uh, sanitize our hands each time that the person comes up for for the ashes uh, and so the again the, the, the church um, the Vatican and and the bishops of the church have decided that the the best way to handle this will be um, offer the prayers of the imposition once and then each person will come up and the priest or the minister will then uh, sprinkle the ashes on the uh, over the head of the person now, you know, you might say, well, Father, you know, uh, will my hair get itchy, <laughs> you know, in, 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 in during that time, you know, uh, am I allowed to, 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 to wash my hair or, you know, so that my hair doesn't get itchy? I don't want ashes all over my hair. Well, the answer is this, is that, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to wash your hair after you do that, I mean, you can certainly do that. It's not... Uh, it's not uh, a terrible thing. It's not a sin to do so. Um, but, you know, it is still a wonderful practice to have. Uh, or, uh, I'll share with you what I said to, to the students this morning. As you know, I, I started um, um, visiting the, the middle school students at St. Michael Regional School as part of my, my pastoral uh, initiative for our youth. And I said to the kids, well, you know... Uh, can't you offer it up for Jesus? Can't you do something for Jesus? All right, so a little inconvenience, you know, having a little uh, sprinkle of ashes on, over your head. Again, it, it's a small sacrifice that we make for Jesus. And, and after all, Lent is, uh, is a time for sacrifice. So uh, that's that. So that's what will happen on Ash Wednesday. And um, um, you will have many opportunities to be able to to receive the ashes again either at mass or during the, the two of our prayer services that's going to be held uh, on that day uh, we will not we will not be um, imposing or distributing ashes um, in the office or in the rectory all right yeah, again the, the, it should be done in the context of a liturgical celebration that's what the church asks for so uh, you know, we're not going to have a, a drive-by ash service, all right? So we have plenty of opportunities to be able to receive ashes uh, in one of our liturgical services or during Mass. So that's next week, and I hope that you'll be able to join us. Uh, as you may know, the governor has increased our indoor capacity to 35%. Um, which means that we can add a few more people in, in our church, in our churches, uh, at, our, at Queen of Peace, and at Our Lady of Lords. And um, if any of you are concerned about the pandemic or the cleanliness, we have been operating for the last several months, and uh, with our enhanced uh, cleaning and sanitation, um, praise God, we have been able to um, uh, operate uh, safely for our masses and for our liturgical services. So I hope you'll be able to join us. Um, obviously, if not, uh, we will be live streaming uh, one of the masses uh, for your for your convenience. Um, so that's Ash Wednesday. Also, uh, again, if you have not heard during during Lent, <clears throat> we're going to uh, reintroduce uh, Eucharistic adoration. So uh, the way it will work is that beginning on February 24th, which is a Wednesday, 
we will be having Eucharistic adoration from 4 to 6 p.m. at Our Lady of Lourdes. And, um, and then 6.15, we are going to have our regular daily Mass on Wednesdays. So that's beginning on February 24th, Eucharistic Adoration. So we are looking for adorers. So if you would like to sign up to spend time with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, I encourage you to please call our office and um, speak to one of our secretaries and they will be glad to, to schedule you for adoration. So hope to see you there. Uh, a wonderful way again to, to, uh, you know, to begin our Lenten celebration. Uh, spending time with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. So, beginning February 24th, 4 to 6 p.m. Eucharistic Adoration. And then we have the 6.15 p.m. Mass. After the 6.15 p.m. Mass at 7 p.m., we are going to be participating on the Bishop's Initiative for the Light is On for Confessions. So, either I or Father Joe or Monsignor Tracy will be available for confessions at 7 p.m. at the conclusion of the 6.15 evening Mass on Wednesdays during Lent. Um, this is an initiative that Bishop Sullivan has started and he, Bishop had asked all of the parishes in the diocese to participate in this initiative so that the people will know that there will always be confessions in, in most of our parishes at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays during Lent. So spread the word, uh, spread the word. The light is on for confessions. And again, it's not just in here in our parish, but the parishes throughout the diocese will be offering confessions at 7 p.m. Um, March 15th to the 19th, mark your calendars. Monday to Thursday, March 15th to the 19th, uh, at 7 p.m., we are going to be having our parish mission. And our preacher for our parish mission is... Father Anthony Manipella. Father Anthony is now the pastor at St. Gianna Mola Parish in Northfield, New Jersey. So he is one of our priests. Uh, he is a very gifted preacher, wonderful, wonderful priest. Uh, he's been a priest for a long time. He was actually my, my second pastor uh, when I was an associate at St. Peter's Church in Merchantville. So Father Anthony is going to be our parish mission, will lead us on our parish mission. It will be at 7 p.m. every evening at Our Lady of Lords from March 15th to the 19th. And at the end of each mission, we will be concluding with benediction. And confessions will also be offered Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of the parish mission. So, um, of course, I, I, I invite each and every one of you to, to join us for the parish mission. Um, again, if you are not able to join us in person for, you know, because of concerns for, for COVID or for health reasons or what have you, uh, it will be live streamed here on Facebook Live um, every night uh, of the parish mission. And consequently, it will also be posted in YouTube for your, for your, for your viewing uh, convenience. So uh, you might ask, well, Father, what's a parish mission? A parish mission is basically a retreat. So it's a parish retreat. Boy, can't we all use a retreat, huh? And um, we have a wonderful preacher coming in. And the theme of the parish mission is rediscovering our Catholic faith. Rediscovering our Catholic faith. So Father Anthony was just sharing with me his schema for the, for the, uh, for the parish mission. And I'm really, really excited uh, for us to really enter into this parish mission, this parish retreat together. So... March 15th to the 19th, 7 p.m. Uh, at Our Lady of Lords. It will also be live, live stream, Father Anthony Manapella. Um, and then, of course, uh, we will have our you know regular Triduum schedule um, for, for Holy Week. We will, we will certainly talk more about that in, in, in the future uh, as we get closer. We are having Stations of the Cross uh, beginning on the first Friday of Lent. And we will be alternating, as we did in the past, between Our Lady Queen of Peace and Our Lady of Lords. Uh, we will not be having the soup. Uh, so in the past, we did the soup and stations. So we won't be providing the soup for you. But you are certainly welcome to have your own soup when you get home. All right. 
um, but we will be having Stations of the Cross in our respective churches uh, during that time. Um, so anyway, that kind of gives you uh, up to speed a little bit on, on Lent. Uh, and as you can see, we have a lot of things going on here in our parish during Lent. Um, in addition to that, there's a couple of things that you know I'm, I'm happy to, to, to share with you as well. Uh, as you know, this past weekend, we had our kickoff or our house of charity uh, even though we had a you know um, a snow blizzard um, we did um, show the video uh, that was published by the house of charity and and Bishop Sullivan is featured in that video it's actually a very well done video if you have not seen it uh, it is posted on Facebook as well as on our website so it's only a few minutes but it's actually a very well done video and Bishop Sullivan has some some really um, uh, important message and information that I think you will find interesting especially if you're concerned about how does the House of Charity or how does the uh, bankruptcy affect the House of Charity well Bishop directly addresses that in his video that none of your contribution for the House of Charity uh, will be affected by the bankruptcy um, Consequently, this weekend, I will be preaching at all the masses um, to, uh, as part of the appeal for the House of Charity. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, to being able to speak to all of our parishioners at all of the masses. Uh, again, just coming down the pike in here, um, we will also be having some speakers from, uh, hopefully, during, during, uh, during Lent in, in, in all of our masses, some speakers from... Uh, Gloucester Catholic High School to talk about uh, Catholic education and the value of Catholic education. Uh, speaking of Catholic education, I want you to stay tuned to uh, a new initiative that we're starting here in the parish. Um, we will be starting a scholarship fund uh, through the parish. This is part of our uh, Catholic Strong Case Statement that, that uh, our parish had our pastoral council and finance council, our parishioners, have identified as a need and um, we want to support Catholic education and in our efforts to support Catholic education we are starting a Mary Mother of Mercy Parish scholarship uh, for the first year which is which would be this coming year we are offering a thousand dollars scholarship for high school students from our parish who are attending a Catholic high school Catholic diocesan high school in the Diocese of Camden and a $500 uh, scholarship for anyone who wishes or who's planning on attending a Catholic elementary school in the Diocese of Camden. So very exciting um, and um, stay tuned for that. I, I will be publishing um, information on that uh, for all of our parishioners. So any of our registered parishioners um, who have children in Catholic schools will, will certainly qualify to apply for this scholarship. Um, so anyway, those are some of the things that, that's going on here in our parish. Um, next week, uh, as we begin Ash Wednesday, uh, we, we, we will have our, our coffee break show, but it's going to be a little different. Uh, we're going to be doing the Stations of the Cross um, with you. And um, we will be doing it... Yeah, Right now, I'm planning on doing it at Our Lady of Lourdes um, Church, but we might even do it in the grotto. So I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, but we are going to be having a Stations of the Cross during our coffee break, and it will give me an opportunity to maybe meditate with you the different Stations of the Cross and to talk about the Stations of the Cross. So that's what we'll be doing on, uh, on um, next Wednesday. And then uh, down the road, we have a couple of uh, important guests that are coming. Um, we are expecting uh, down the road in, May, in a couple of weeks or so, uh, we have a special guest from the House of Charity um, will, be, will be joining us to talk about the House of Charity. Uh, and we will also be having um, um, Father Peter Gallagher, who is one of our priests. He is now uh, completing his graduate studies in Rome. And he will be joining us. Uh, he will be joining us live, live, uh, of course, via Zoom uh, from Rome. And uh, so I'm excited about that for uh, for him to tell us about his studies in Rome and 
you know, how are things doing these days in Italy in the middle of the pandemic? Um, so he'll be joining us down the road. So we have some exciting programs, exciting things happening for our coffee break. Um, so tune in again next week, uh, my brothers and sisters, my dear parishioners, as we, uh, for our coffee break uh, during, on Ash Wednesday, as together I pray with you the Stations of the Cross. So as we close, um, let me, uh, before we close, I, I did promise that I was going to, to look at and, and see if we have any questions uh, for our coffee break. So let me just, um, uh, let me just see. Let's see what, 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 um, uh, some, if we have any comments or questions. So we, we have, we did, we do have one in here. Um, no thoughts, if, if there any thoughts of placing ashes on a person's forehead, an individual can make the sign of the cross on his or her own head. Um, no, the, the church does not really permit for you to, uh, because it is a blessing that it, that is given, um, you know, the church does not allow, I can't even do it myself as a priest, impose ashes on, my, on myself. So that is not something that the church allows. Certainly, you can make a, a sign of the cross, but um, the, the church does not allow that, unfortunately, at this uh, present time. Um, and let me see if there's anything else. Looks like, um, uh, let me see if there's any other questions, but it looks like that's, that's all there is to it. So anyway, uh, thank you again for joining us, and um, let's close with a prayer uh, as we, um, uh, as we, Go on our coffee break now. I can see Father Father Joe. <laughs> I can see Father Joe in our in our show in here. Um, so we're having a little technical uh, issue. <laughs> so let's see before we, we close. I want to make sure Father Joe has the uh, the camera pointed to. There was. <laughs> Well, um, maybe I should go in that side of the camera. Yeah, 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 and I'll give the blessing. <laughs> and I'll give you a blessing, yes. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we will, uh, we will close with a prayer. All right? So, okay. <laughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear good and gracious God, we thank you for your ble abundant blessings we thank you lord for always constantly showering us showering us with your graces we ask you lord to be in a very special way with uh, all those who are sick and suffering especially the members of our parish who are in need of our prayers and together we seek the intercession of our blessed lady mary mother of mercy hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, everyone. God bless you, and we will see you next week. <laughs>